Thank you and good morning. Your Excellencies and distinguished guests, I'm delighted to be back at uh, the Cause Energy Eurasian Energy Forum. Since its founding six years ago, this forum has established itself as really one of the premier conferences for discussing the future of global energy markets, as well as the crucial role that Eurasia must play in shaping that future. The theme for this opening session is the geopolitics of Eurasia, challenges, and new frontiers. That's fitting because in the 21st century, energy promises to play a pivotal role in international economics and geopolitics. And nations such as Kazakhstan will in become increasingly important because they have the resources and the potential to respond to the energy needs of the global economy in ways that few others can. In considering the importance of energy and the importance of Kazakhstan on the world energy map, it's an imperative that we take a long-term perspective. There's an old and well-known Kazakh proverb which says, there's nothing as far away as yesterday, and there's nothing closer than tomorrow. Nowhere is this more true than in our industry. We must prepare now for the decades to come, because like tomorrow, they'll be here before we know it. In my remarks this morning, I'll discuss the energy challenges we face in the decades ahead, the role of Eurasia in these energy challenges, and the new supplies of energy that will come from forging strong partnerships, leveraging innovative technologies, and investing over the long term. Let's begin by considering, though, the forces that shape the global economy and energy markets. Of course, at this moment in history, the short-term outlook for the global economy is uncertain at best. Many nations throughout the world continue to struggle with high unemployment, slow growth, and very high levels of debt, while other countries face the challenges with the pace of economic growth and inflation. Despite these short-term challenges, the long-term prospects for the global economy, though, remain quite strong and promising. Populations are going to continue to grow with education levels rising and free trade ultimately expanding. Technology and expertise are increasingly crossing borders, improving efficiency, opportunity, and the hope of higher standards of living for all. As we look toward the decades to come, we would expect the global economy to grow by some 80 percent by the year 2030, driven largely by population growth here in Eurasia. That growth will be even more impressive in developing nations, where economic growth is expected to expand by 150 percent. And for many nations in Asia, growth could be even higher. With this long-term growth comes a need for affordable and reliable sources of energy. Of course, energy is a fundamental building block of developed and developing economies. It powers technology, supports development, and literally makes trade among nations possible. This essential nature of energy is why we project that global energy demand will be about 25 percent higher by the year 2030. Significant gains in energy efficiency, largely driven by new technologies, will account for the difference between economic and energy demand growth rates. Meeting this increase in demand will require the development of all economic sources of energy. Of course, foremost among those will be hydrocarbons. In fact, we project that oil and natural gas will continue to supply more than 60 percent of the energy needs by the year 2030. But for the nations of Eurasia, this demand for oil and natural gas is really an extraordinary opportunity because nations such as Kazakhstan have the potential to supply this energy, these resources can be the gateway to economic growth, job creation, technological innovation, higher levels of education, and of course, greater foreign trade. In addition, the nations of Eurasia are strategically placed to supply both the developed nations of Europe 
and the rising nations of, of Asia and beyond. But of course, there are a few challenges. As we've seen here in Kazakhstan, physical and geological challenges can combine in ways that require innovative thinking and novel applications of both established and new technologies. The industry has confronted the challenges of extreme environmental conditions here, combined with deep, high pressure, high H2S reservoirs. To do so, industry has incorporated cutting edge metallurgical and drilling technologies and pioneered the development of the world's highest pressure sour gas compression. In offshore, we have developed capabilities to meet the added challenges of seasonal ice flow conditions while seeking to protect the environmentally sensitive Caspian Sea. Overcoming such challenges are a fact of life in today's energy industry. The world's new energy frontiers are increasingly found in very hard to reach places that require significant capital investment and breakthrough technologies. In our industry, we face financial risks, geopolitical risks, technical risks associated with exploration, development, and production. In addition to all of these challenges, we obviously have to develop and produce these resources in a safe, environmentally responsible manner. Of course, the key to doing all of that is risk management. Simply put, effective risk management is an operations imperative and the cornerstone of sustainable cooperation between resource owners and energy producers. For more than 125 years, we've proven that there are ways to manage risk so we can achieve our shared goals. We know that effective risk management can be strengthened by long-term planning, sustained investment, and technological innovation, and rapid deployment. We've also learned to strengthen risk management with teamwork, international cooperation, and a relentless commitment to implement best practices. Finally, we can strengthen risk management by recognizing and building on the strengths of our national oil company partners while ensuring clear understanding and strong support from leaders of government. As we look to the future in Kazakhstan, Eurasia, and beyond, it's clear that we all have a role to play in opening up new energy opportunities in ways that make them sustainable and affordable and competitive in the marketplace. For example, international oil companies have an opportunity to share cutting-edge technology and expertise in national content development. In markets all around the world, we've proven we have the ability to add value along the entire energy value chain. And we have found with the right policies in place, we can do this while contributing to local communities and economies through mentoring, knowledge transfer, in interaction with international scientific and engineering experts. National oil companies, of course, bring a deep understanding of local geology, operations, and environmental conditions. They bring established relationships with government and community leaders, and a desire to invest in the long-term education and development of their people. And in this global effort, we've seen time and time again that governments also have a crucial role to play. In the development of future energy supplies, government policies will determine how competitive and how sustainable new sources will be. When governments build stable policy frameworks, uphold the rule of law, encourage free trade, and the flow of technology, they create an environment that allows for long-term planning, long-term investing, and long-range partnerships. The energy industry has proven that with such policies in place, we can bring energy to the global marketplace in a way that maximizes value, creates economic and educational opportunity, and protects lives in the environment. Here in Kazakhstan, President Nazarbayev had a vision for the nation and its people. And he sees the potential of energy development and further building a thriving economy with opportunity for all. But in order to achieve the President's vision, industry and government must work collaboratively to, 
address the full range of risk management issues, support policies that advance technological development, welcome international experts in developing globally competitive resources, and engage in a consultative process to ensure legislation can achieve governmental objectives and encourage economic growth. By aligning our efforts through open and mutually supportive dialogue, investments by global industry and local Kazakh businesses, development can be accelerated. Such open dialogue and sound policy development will help create the business environment that encourages international companies to invest their time and their money with confidence. For the national workforce, these policies will lead to training and mentoring in high-tech industries by international experts, including management systems and processes, and for local businesses and local suppliers as well. Industry and government have worked together this year on legislation impacting expatriate work permits. Our collaborative dialogue to find pragmatic solutions to satisfy national workforce development objectives is an example of what we must do to achieve more together. In this dialogue, we have striven to balance the need for workforce skill development and the experience requirements needed to implement challenging projects. We believe that international managers and technical experts living and working in country can have an invaluable multiplier effect, helping accelerate the training and the mentoring of more Kazakh citizens to be the scientists, engineers, and business leaders of the future. And finally, government can help by ensuring timely decision making to support the project implementation schedules necessary for commercial viability. This December, the Republic of Kazakhstan will celebrate its 20th anniversary as an independent and sovereign nation. We congratulate the President, the leaders, and the people of Kazakhstan on this milestone. Industry and governments have proven that by working together, we can invest, we can in innovate, and we can open up opportunities that create a better future here in Kazakhstan, Eurasia, and around the world. Thank you for your attention.